Hello everyone. Welcome to the series on how to design an e-commerce website like Amazon. This is the first video on this series and we are going to discuss about three-tier architecture. In this video, you will understand what three-tier architecture is, how three-tier architecture is implemented with the real-world example. To easily understand the concept of three-tier architecture, it is considered the example of filmmaking. As you can see in this slide, there are actors involved, directors involved, and the script is being written by the director. In a filmmaking process, initially, the script is written by the director. So this is the raw data needed for the film, which includes all the different characters, roles, scene making, dialogues for each scene between characters written as a script by the director. Then this data is processed by the director assistant directors involved to exhibit different emotions for the scene, such as anger, pain, fight, cleverness. There are three different layers as we discussed. Similarly, in a three-tier architecture, the data is stored in the database layer and then it is processed by the application layer with programming languages such as Node.js, Java, etc. And then it is presented to the user through HTML, CSS and JavaScript code. So let's now directly jump into the real world example. Like as you can see the Amazon website here. This is the presentation layer. That is what you see as a user. You can see here in the home page of the Amazon website, the user details such as user name, user address, what are the orders done by the user, and also below some images, events happening like when you click this buy again, then it will buy the product again that you purchased. So this is the presentation layer that is the user interface on clicking this orders button here in the home page we'll move on to the orders page where you will see the different orders done by the customer so as you can see here there are orders shown for the last three months so there are totally four orders being placed. Here you can see the list of items, the picture is given and what type of product it is and uh, order ID and yeah, um, and to whom it is dispatched, what is the total amount and when was the order placed, etc. exactly the date. So these are the details being in, uh, shown directly in the presentation layer. We have selected only the orders for the last three months. It can be for the last year or the, for the last uh, six months or a custom date between um, a particular dates. So uh, there can be many orders being placed by the user. So now, but we have filtered out only uh, uh, orders in the last three months. That is, you have n number of orders from that you have extracted or filtered out four orders. So which means there is some process involved to extract only the relevant data here and moreover as you see in this home page this day orders belongs to the user persona so there are n number of user customers for the amazon website as you know and these orders are belonging to only this user persona this is the database table actually which is in the back end which will look similar to like this so it will have the order id which you saw here it will have the customer ID, which is not actually seen uh, in the interface now. The customer name, persona, as you saw, order date, and then product name, and the quantity. This table, uh, that is, you can say, orders table, contains other records as well. For example, orders belonging to the other user, user two, orders which are done in the beginning of uh, 2023, that is February 20, that is not in the last three months. So it has all the orders actually for every users for all the time period. But now what we have shown in this user interface is only a certain amount of data. It has been filtered out. So this filtered data, the question is, do we really need this filtering to be done? That's the answer is simple, yes. 
because there are millions of records in the orders table it includes all the records by the customers who have their account in amazon and it also includes the orders which were placed since the website was launched so in order to filter these millions of records we need to execute and query so which is with the constraint customer id as 200 that is the user who is logged in persona and the order date in the last three months that is greater than first november 2023 so therefore the green re records that you see here colored would have to be filtered out by this query so there is somebody between this database layer and the presentation layer who is that he is the application layer so the application layer contains the classes methods and objects and these methods executes the query select star from orders with customer id 200 and order date greater than first number 2023 so this query will give out the three records which you wanted to show in the presentation layer and this is achieved in the application layer So once again, there are three layers involved, presentation layer, which you see, application layer in between which processes the data, and then the third layer being the, which stores the actual data and examples, uh, examples of databases such as MySQL, MongoDB, etc. Till now, we have seen what three-tier architecture is. Let's now look at why do we need such an architecture? It is because of four reasons development speed, scalability, reliability, and security. Development speed. It is faster to develop because each layer is worked out by a separate team. For example, database layer team will create the database tables. The application layer team will create the classes, objects, and methods to write the queries to access the database layer. And the front-end team or the user interface team will create the HTML elements and different controls, user interface controls to create the presentation layer. Therefore, each of the layer is separated and it is independent of each other. Scalability. Suppose if you want to add a new feature, say for example, cancel ordered orders. So it is very easy to implement a new feature because the new database table for the cancelled order is can be created in the database layer independent of the other database tables and the application layer can extend with a new method or a function to uh, extract the data for the cancelled orders and the front-end team will have to just implement a new tab and the corresponding user interface here to display the cancelled orders therefore it is very easy to scale the application it is reliable as well because it is less prone to errors so an error in one feature is very less likely to affect the other functionalities involved therefore the better the performance of the application will also be better as the fun functionalities are independent of each other last but not the least security the security of the application is also better because any SQL injections or hacking or phishing attacks can be filtered out easily by the application layer. So if there is a, such a SQL injection attack happening, then the application layer can identify that and prevent access to the database backend, therefore protecting the um, user data. Here we come to the end of the session. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe if you like the video.